Hi guys, if you're watching this video, there's a good odds that you are dealing with a partner who's stonewalling or gaslighting you. And to this date, I've worked with thousands of my clients who are facing the exact same issue and they managed to fix this issue and they're thriving in the relationship because of it. And all the success that all my clients get starts with these few key mindset shifts that I'm about to show you in this video. And these are key mindset shifts that I have not seen or heard any other professionals, any other videos talk about, which is a massive shame. So be sure to stick around to the end because I don't want you to miss a single thing in this video. Now. What I'm about to say in this video can offend some people, and this video is not for people who simply wanna blame and play victim. If you go around YouTube, you will see a ton of videos of people just trying to blame people who gaslight, people who stonewall as narcissists, and play the blame game, basically. But as you'll see from this video, doing those things just makes it worse. So if you are a person who wants to do that, this video is not for you. But if you are someone who is looking at your situation right now and you want to fix it, you want to find a resolution to it, you want to create a thriving relationship with your partner in the future, then this video is made exactly for you. And if you're new to this channel, guys, in case we haven't met, my name is Jeffrey and I help thousands of men with the right skills, with the right internal shifts to be able to become an irreplaceable asset in their relationship to ultimately reattract their partners back. So the first point I want to talk about in this video is we need to first understand the main causes of gaslighting or stonewalling. And a lot of you may be a bit confused. Why is gaslighting and stonewalling two completely different things being discussed in the same video? What you need to understand guys is that both gaslighting and stonewalling are basically the same things. They're rooted in the same things, but they're just a different manifestation of what we call resistance and self-preservation. So to understand this, let's understand what it means to self-preserve in the first place. So the reason why people self-preserve can be caused by a lot of their childhood experiences, can be caused by a lot of the events that happen in the relationship in the past, for example, what you did, what you did to cause resistance and self-preservation in your partner. And all these experiences, what happens is they cause a lot of insecurities and defense mechanisms within a person, in this case, within your partner. And so essentially, when you feel threatened, when you feel the lack of safety, then you will self-preserve. Pretty straightforward. So when you understand gaslighting and stonewalling in this way, you can see gaslighting, for example, as an active form of self-preservation. So this is when someone feels threatened, they feel a bit unsafe in a situation, in a relationship, and they might tell white lies here there. They might tell even full-blown lies. They might try to shift the blame or they might even decline or deny of something that they did, something happening in the relationship. And if you are looking at your partner gaslighting you right now, it's not just your partner who actually gaslights. If you look at your own life and your own behaviors, you will notice that you actually gaslight a lot more often too. Heck, I even gaslight sometimes. When I feel that I'm in a very unsafe situation, I might tell little white lies. I might be very defensive and try to deny any wrongdoings that I made. And the funny part is that if you are denying this, if you're denying that you are gaslighting, then you're actually gaslighting right then and there. Think about it, guys. And most people who are gaslighting, they often don't even realize they're gaslighting because it's almost like a reflex. It's a very subconscious defense mechanism. For example, you might find yourself in a situation where let's say your partner comes home and she starts barking accusations at you. And of course you feel threatened, you feel unsafe. And when you hear her barking accusations at you, you start to maybe deny any wrongdoings you had. You might start to justify yourself, explain yourself. Maybe you tell a bit of white lies here and there. And you often do this without even realizing it, but right then and there you are gaslighting. So the main point here guys, is that gaslighting is just an active manifestation of self-preservation and everyone does it, including yourself. And when you understand it in this way too, you also understand that stonewalling is just a passive manifestation of that self-preservation mechanism again. And again, just like gaslighting, you actually stonewall a lot. You might, for example, find yourself in a position where you're dealing with a very difficult person, a person who never listens to you, who, never, who always misunderstands the intentions behind everything you do. And let's say this person wants to have a conversation. What would you say? The first thing you would say is, you know what? I don't really want to talk about it. Maybe you walk away and you just skirt the conversation. Maybe you say some passive aggressive things like, yeah, or whatever, to just avoid the conversation. Right then and there, guys, you're stonewalling too. So once we understand that, in order for us to fully understand the key mindset shifts that we need to have, we also need to understand the role of environments in determining your behavior and just people's behavior in general. And this is a principle or a phenomenon that has been studied quite extensively. And it's not just these studies that you can look at to show and to see the proof in your own life of how much environments can affect behavior. So for example, if I were to ask you th these questions here. So right now you're seeing your partner stonewalling or gaslighting you, doing all these behaviors that you deem to be toxic. First question is, have your partner always done that? So if you look back in the beginnings of your relationship, when you were in your honeymoon period, when you just first met, did you see a lot of these stonewalling and gaslighting behaviors? Probably not. Because back then, both of you probably felt a high degree of safety. But then now, as the safety degrades, that creates an environment where self-preservation is often needed, where 
your partner would gaslight and stonewall you a lot more, and you find yourself gaslighting and stonewalling your partner a lot more as well. The second question you can ask yourself also is, do you see your partner in situations where whenever she feels safe, whenever she feels comfortable in that setting with that person, where the stonewalling and gaslighting behaviors actually goes away? I'm sure you see your partner in these situations all the time. And you can also see from my client stories, hundreds of people who are convinced that their partner is a narcissist, who are stonewalling, who is gaslighting, but realize that once they change the culture of the relationship, once they establish safety, once they change the environment, their partner's behavior changes in a massive way too. And if you want to see more of those client stories where you can see this shift happening, then you can check out the links underneath this video for more of my client stories there. And you know, the funny part, guys, is that a lot of people watching this video might think, oh, well, all those people are dealing with partners who's stonewalling or gaslighting because their environment may not be the healthiest for them. But my partner is different. My partner is just kind of messed up in that way where she will gaslight and she will stonewall despite whatever I do. If that's what you're thinking, guys, then let's look at what you're insinuating here. You're insinuating that your partner is so messed up that even if you provide the perfect environment for her, that she will resort to gaslighting and stonewalling anyway. And if that's the opinion of your partner that you have, then is it any wonder why your partner doesn't feel safe if you think so lowly of her like that? Is there any wonder why she feels the need to self-preserve? So the ironic thing is that if you think that, if you think that your partner is so messed up and you blame the gaslighting and stonewalling on her character, then what is happening is you're actually creating a culture, an environment where she needs to self-preserve, where you're actually worsening the problems of the gaslighting and stonewalling. So once we understand those two principles behind the causes of gaslighting and stonewalling and also how environments can drastically change behavior, guys. Now I wanna discuss with you the five key mindset shifts that you need to make that can really help you move the needle, that can help you start the journey of actually healing and resolving your situation right now. Number one, guys, is that I want you to be hyper aware of what we call TBUs. And TBUs are always referred to as true but useless things. So the problem with a lot of relationships, guys, is that people spend a lot of time playing the blame game and trying to decide whose fault something is. So for example, your partner is stonewalling, gaslighting you, you, take it upon yourself to convince yourself, to convince your partner, to convince the world that it's her fault. The reason why your relationship is falling apart is because of her. A lot of people spend time labeling the partner, oh, you are a narcissist, it's something wrong with you. And you might even get angry at this video for insinuating that your partner stonewalling and gaslighting you is actually not her fault. So let's say that you watch all these videos that tells, that tries to label your partner, tries to pin the blame on your partner. So let's say you find out that it's true. Well, what can you do with that information really? Not much. The only thing you can do is simply either wait for your partner to change, passively waiting, or the only thing it tells you is maybe you should leave the relationship. But it doesn't actually give you anything useful, anything actionable for you to do, which is why we call it true. It's true. It may be true that it's your partner's fault, but it's a useless thing to know. And the second thing, guys, is that it doesn't really change the reality that you might have made some contributions to the degradation of the environment, degradation of the safety environment to lead to your partner's negative behaviors. And so many people are so stuck on playing the blame game that they have failed to basically look within at all. And it's almost like that example that I give a lot of my clients, right? You know, looking within sometimes and introspecting and seeing your contribution to the problem. It's often like looking in the mirror, where some people avoid looking in the mirror to see what the actual state of themselves. But you not looking in the mirror does not mean that you don't have a booger hanging out from your nose. You might. So the point here, guys, is that let's say you decide or you watch some videos that tell us you that your partner is to blame for this whole thing. It doesn't change the reality that there could have been something that you did to actually contribute to the degradation of the environment here. And number three, guys, is that it doesn't really change also, finding this out, that there could have been a lot that you could have done to actually reverse the cycle, to not play into the same script, to actually reverse the cycle, reverse the feedback loop, and start creating a more positive environment despite. And if you're so stuck in playing the blame game, guys, that's why the, there's a quote that says, even if you won an argument, you've actually already lost. So the question here, guys, is that, do you wanna be right or do you wanna actually get what you want? And playing the blame game, guys, and trying to label your partner like this is what we call TBUs because, yeah, it could be true that part of this is your partner's fault, but knowing that doesn't change the fact that you still need to change. You could have done something to change the environment in a massively positive way. And it doesn't change the fact that you might have actually something to do with the degradation of the environment of your relationship, with the culture of your relationship. So if you want to avoid this trap of falling into the TBUs, guys, there's one question that you need to ask, really, is does finding out this truth, finding out this thing, thinking about this thing, does it actually change anything that I need to do? Does it actually change the fact that I might have some contribution? Does it actually change the fact that I can still the influence the situation in a positive way? If the answer is yes, then think about it. But if the answer is no, then that's a true but useless. And I get the allure of playing TBUs, guys, and falling into this trap because it's fun and it's easy to 
simply look at someone and blame all your problems on them. And it's easy to not look within and actually admit and realize that, yes, I could have actually contributed to the problem in some way. And the second key mindset shift you need to make, guys, is that leaders never, ever blame character. Now, if you look at, for example, ATM machines, ATM machines always dispense your card first and then they dispense your cash. Why is that? Because if it dispenses the cash first, people will just take the cash and then leave their cards there. But if you think about it, how did someone think of this solution to help people not forget their cards in the ATM machines? It requires someone to not blame character and say, hey, how can I change the system, the environment, so that it makes it very difficult for people to forget their card? Now imagine if the person who was supposed to solve this problem instead said, you know what? People just should just stop being so forgetful. They blame the character instead. People are so forgetful, people just need to stop being so forgetful. If that's their mindset, they might never have come up with this very ingenious solution, very simple one. Another example is if you look at delivery trucks. In the US here, you can make a right turn on red. Now, if you look at delivery trucks, you'll notice that they always turn right. They never turn left. Why is that? Because making right turns is a lot more efficient and it's a great way for these delivery companies to get their drivers to be more efficient without getting them to, forcing them to drive more dangerously. So to find the solution, someone needs to not blame someone's character and say, how can I change and improve the environment, the system to allow for a better behavior? to allow for more efficient behavior in this case. Now imagine again if that person, the person who was managing the routes, instead blamed character and said, you know what, these drivers are too slow, they're complaining too much, and they just need to drive faster. Then you would never have come up with that really ingenious solution. And if you look at any business leaders, any really great cultures in companies, etc., the greatest leaders are the ones who never blame character. For example, if their employees are not performing to par, they're not saying, you guys need to do better, something is wrong with you, they're more saying, how can I change the environment? How can I change the culture to make it easier for you to do better? And again, guys, I get the allure of blaming people because when you blame character, when you blame your partner's character in this case, one is that it absolves you of any work that you need to do. It's not your fault, it's their fault, so why do you have to do anything? And it can be very satisfying for your brain because it seems so certain. You are basically assigning the problem to your partner, to someone else, and once you label the problem to them, even though it's wrong, it even though it may be wrong, you feel like it's right, it feels very satisfying to do it. And so understand that when left to its own devices, our human brain will always want to resort to something that's easiest, something that will make us more comfortable, something that feels natural to us. And what feels natural to us, unfortunately, is that we often like to blame people, which is why if you look at the scientific literature on this, they actually have a term for this phenomenon where we try to blame problems to other people instead of us. And that's called the fundamental attribution error. So again, guys, real leaders are the people who don't just whip the people into shape and say, this is your fault. They're not the ones who are trying to label the problems on other people. They're the ones trying to say, let me to take it upon myself. Even though this is, may not be my fault, my partner stonewalling and gaslighting may not be my fault or may not be something that I'm doing. They're saying, how can I change the environment? How can I change the system to make it easier for my partner to not gaslight, to not stonewall, etc." And I get it guys, being a leader like this is hard and it can feel very unnatural. But again, I want you to remember there's two quotes here. Number one is that if you want to be part of the 1%, if you want to be successful, then you have to be willing to do what the 99% would not do so that you can live the life the 99% cannot live. And what we need to understand about life guys sometimes is that what feels natural, what feels easy, what feels effortless may not always be the right things to do. For example, we made a video uh, a while back about the victim mindset and how it's so easy for our brains to play the victim. but Playing the victim may not always be the healthiest thing to do. But the unfortunate thing, you guys, is that the average person are the people who would do what is natural, what is effortless to them, what feels comfortable to them. And so popular ideas are usually telling you ideas that are natural and feels easy. But again, popular ideas may not always be right. So even though there's a ton of videos out there telling you to label your partner as a stonewaller, as a gaslighter, and tries to label them as a narcissist and some personality problems with that behavior, know that popular ideas may not always be right. And the second quote I want you to remember, guys, is that you cannot solve your problems with the same approach you use to create it. And so in this case, I know your, all your instinct here is to want to label your partner and to judge your partner for stonewalling and gaslighting in the relationship. But I want you to ask yourself, where has that process, where has that thinking, where has that, that approach actually gotten you? If you're watching this video, it's probably gotten you nowhere. So all I encourage you guys is just to be open to a different approach. And while being a leader is hard like this and looking within to say, how can I change the environment and taking it upon yourself to do that can be hard. It's a necessary thing to do if you want to resolve your situation. And number three, guys, is that stop seeing yourself as the victim, because in this case, your partner is also the victim. So again, in this video, we established that a lot of people, the reasons why they gaslight in Stonewall is not often because of some personality problem, but because 
they're self-preserving. And they're self-preserving because they feel this insecurity. And so when people gaslight and stonewall you, they're actually telling you that they feel like a victim right now. But if you look at their gaslighting and stonewalling and you gaslight them back, for example, by trying to shift the blame to them, trying to pin the blame on them, then you're also trying to play the victim. You're also seeing yourself as the victim. And so in this case, not only is your partner the victim, but you're also the victim. And this is why when people are facing stonewalling and gaslighting, and they react in the average person's way of reacting, which is they get angry back at it, they can never get out of the cycle because here, the victim is trying to uh, help the victim. The wounded cannot help the wounded, guys. And so here, you can really see the absurdity of how most people respond to stonewalling and gaslighting and how absurd that is to respond in that way. Now, if you want to stop feeling like the victim, there's two things you need to understand. And there's two things I tell my clients all the time is that you have a very high degree of power to actually influencing your partner's behavior, to influencing the whole culture as a whole. Uh, whether you know it or not, you are currently already, what you do, what, how you react, how you respond, is already influencing what your partner does and how she responds as well. For example, your partner comes home in a bad mood and her bad mood causes you to be in a bad mood, let's say, and you respond badly to that. Well, if you respond badly to that, your bad response will make her response worse. So here, what you do is already affecting what your partner does. Now, if you are watching this video, most likely you are perpetuating a very negative cycle, a very negative influence to that cycle. But if your bad behavior can contribute to the degradation of the relationship, then it goes to also show that your positive behavior, positive responses can also influence the relationship in a very positive way as well. So you already have a very high degree of power in influencing the culture of the relationship and what your partner does, guys. You just have to use that power properly. And the second thing, guys, is that you need to choose to be a hero. And being a hero is a choice. Not playing the victim is also a choice. So the key distinction between victims and heroes, guys, is that victims always find a reason to fail because of the same reasons. So for example, if you're finding yourself in a position where your relationship is degrading, you will say, oh, my relationship is degrading because my partner is doing so and so. But heroes never play this narrative. Real leaders never play this narrative. Real leaders will always try to find a way to succeed despite. So they could be faced in the exact same situation, the exact same scenario. Instead of saying, I'm failing because of what my partner is doing, they will say, well, we are succeeding despite what my partner is doing. Because they're trying to find a way again to take it upon themselves, to change the culture, to change the environment, to reverse the situation, to reverse the feedback loop in a more positive way in a more positive direction. And number four, guys, is to stop trying to change people, but change their environments instead. So I think the biggest issue that a lot of people face is they look at their partner's behavior and they say, oh, my partner is stonewalling and gaslighting me. How am I supposed to, what am I supposed to say to her to change her behavior directly like that? Well, the answer is you can't. Because while it's hard to change people's behavior directly, the easier way, the easier approach is to actually change the environment. And this is a very key distinction, guys, because while changing people is out of your control, changing their environment is always within your control. You can always have a control in changing their environment. While changing people directly may be very difficult to do because you're trying to um, convince someone who's usually very stubborn, very difficult to convince, when you change their environment, that's totally doable and it have been done thousands of times with my clients if you have the right mindset, if you have the right approach. And I think, again, if you understand the role of environments in changing behaviors, we need to understand that once we change the culture, once we change the, the environment, then that change in environment will also eventually change character. The same way how a simple change in environment and how the way ATM machines work, how UPS trucks drive around and how their routes are planned, how a small change in culture of your company, for example, the company that you work for, can change your behavior dramatically. The way you can change the culture of your relationship can change your partner's behavior dramatically as well. And by extension, yours as well. And number five, guys, is that safety is always a cure, a cure to everything. If you watch any and all my client stories who, of people who are dealing with intense gaslighting, intense stonewalling, and eventually they resolve that situation from that situation to a thriving place, you'll always hear that the journey always starts with changing their environment by creating that safety, emotional and psychological safety back into the relationship. So I know right now if you're watching a lot of videos on relationships and how to create a thriving one, there's so many principles that you can learn. You can learn about attachment styles, you can learn about boundaries, etc. But really guys, the only thing, the one thing that you should be doing is creating safety. When you create that, that is really the root behind everything. Once you create that, once you create a safe environment, there'll be no need for your partner to self-preserve anymore. And once you remove the need to self-preserve, you'll realize also that the behaviors of stonewalling and gaslighting will also go away over time. So to end this video, guys, I just want to show you that we don't have to play into the same script that we've been told. Meaning that if you go to YouTube right now and you find 
videos I'm stonewalling gaslighting, you will see a lot of them are geared towards blaming and shifting the blame to your partner, pinning the blame on your partner, labeling your partner. But that's the existing script, but we don't have to play by that script. If we want to actually resolve the situation and get us to a better place, we have to be willing again to do what the average people would not do, which is here, I want you to be a leader. I want you to change the environment. I want you to uh, reverse the feedback loop in a positive way and be that hero, guys. And so in this video, guys, I gave you some key mindset shifts, some bare minimum mindset shifts that you need to make if you ever want to resolve this situation. But if you want to learn the deeper skills, the deeper steps that you need to actually resolve this situation from zero to 100, feel free to join me in my masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. In that masterclass, I'll show you the exact process that I've shown my clients like Michael, like Scott, like Eve, for example, that you'll see below here and how they got from situation of intense stonewalling, intense gaslighting to the point where they're thriving in their relationships today. If you want to join me in that masterclass, guys, feel free to click the link above my head also down below this video. For now, guys, I'll see you in the next video.